Welcome to Love County, Oklahoma, a small backwoods community smack dab in the middle of Tornado Alley that's caught up in a gigantic vortex of secrets, lies, and two possible murders. It's like a lifetime movie. It's hard to believe that there is that much corruption all clustered in one space. A space and time when 17-year-old Molly Miller and 21-year-old Colt Haynes vanish. I never in my life thought we would be dealing with something like this. It's a family's worst nightmare. What begins with a police chase. The driver of the vehicle spun the tires, um, throwing gravel all over the patrol car. Ends in anguish for family members. It's really hard. But trying to find out what happened to Molly and Colt uncovers possible corruption from the very top. The allegations that the sheriff is facing right now, some pretty serious charges for a sheriff. To the very bottom. Dope dealers, thugs. And this is the man who was running the county. Yes. The twisted tale of alleged corruption and mystery begins on a hot, sticky summer night in Wilson, Oklahoma, when... This dark-colored Honda Accord sped into the parking lot. The driver of the vehicle spun the tires and uh, then took off out of the parking lot, headed southbound towards Dove County. The chase is on. Carter County Sheriff's deputies radio neighboring Love County Sheriff's Department for backup. During the police chase, from from my understanding, the sheriff of Love County told a deputy to call off the chase because he didn't want another one of his cars tore up. The sheriff of Love County, Joe Russell, knows who's behind the wheel. His name is James Con Nip, just plain con to the locals and just plain trouble to deputies. Nip had a history of spinning out his tires in front of police and then running from them. Then as quick as it began, the chase is over. The taillight's last glimmer spotted by deputies as the car barrels down Long Hollow Road. And where that dirt road dead ends is where the disappearance of Molly Miller and Colt Haynes begins. Unbeknownst to deputies, Khan isn't alone on his joyride. In the passenger seat is Colt Haynes, a happy-go-lucky guy. Laughing, he laughed a lot. And he laughed all the way through his face. His eyes laughed. His, you know, uh, he just lit up. And in the back seat, Molly Miller. She's just a bubbly little girl, you know, who, who enjoyed life and enjoyed everybody. She's very compassionate toward people, you know. She sees somebody getting hurt, um, she's gonna take up for them. News anchor Maureen Kane from our affiliate, KXII, is in the newsroom the day the story breaks. We know that on July 7th, James Connip, Colt Haynes, Molly Miller were all in a car together, according to the affidavit. OHP troopers say that all three of those cell phones pinged in the area of Wilson and Ardmore, and that they were all together during that time, during that night. And that night, just after midnight, the 911 switchboard at the Love County Sheriff's Office lights up. There was uh, no information uh, transmitted. It was just a call into 911, and then she hung up. Moments later, more calls to 911. One, two, three, now more than a dozen coming in every other minute in rapid succession. All dropped calls, all from Molly's phone, according to cell phone records obtained by Molly's family. So she makes a 911 call at 12.57 yeah. a.m. there's red stars. Okay. And then there are constant calls. I mean, there are calls every few minutes. Yeah. So how is it possible with calls going on for hours every few minutes that neither one of them could be found? Right. Then a call from Colt. His call goes through. Colt called several people. Um, I have talked to one of the people he talked to and um, he said that Colt told him he was lost in the woods, laying in a creek bed, he didn't know where he was at, and that his ankle was broken and the bone was sticking out. At this point, it's the wee early morning hours. Molly and Colt are alive, but lost. Their friends head out searching for the pair in the woods off Long Hollow Road, where Molly and Colt claim Con dropped them off. They happened to get onto someone's property, and he said, 
um, what are you guys doing on my property? And they said, oh, well, I'm looking for my friend. He's lost in the woods. He said, well, let me go back inside and get my gun and I'll shoot it up into the air. And if he can hear it from where he's at, you'll know he's nearby. The man shoots his gun, Colt, still on the other end of the cell phone, can't hear it. The friends know they're in the wrong area. Around the same time, the 911 calls stop. The last phone call was 939. From my understanding, at that point, around 10 o'clock in the morning, the phone went dead. Um, Colt and Molly's about the same time were turned off. Colt's buddies drive back to town. They don't find Colt and Molly, but they do find Con, with no car, no Colt, no Molly, and no answers. Con Nip, I think he's an evil person. If Molly was last with him, which we know now, and he didn't do anything to Molly, why wouldn't he help us try to find her? Concerned they may be in over their heads, the missing kids' families claim they reach out personally to the Love County Sheriff, Joe Russell, for help. Joe Russell refused to take the report. He said it wasn't his problem. Just by his actions alone, and the fact that he wouldn't even take a police report. It was pretty quick that we figured out that this is, this is something more than just Molly missing. More? It was a big cover-up. It's been cover-up from, from day one. But why in the world would the sheriff of Love County be covering for a criminal? He's just a dirty cop. Molly Miller and Colt Haynes go missing after an overnight police pursuit. And when their parents go searching for answers, they are met with a very strange code of silence. Molly Miller and Colt Haynes are missing, vanished after an overnight police pursuit. I actually found out she was missing by Facebook and I contacted her mother and asked her what was going on. Con Nip, the man driving Colt and Molly the night of the chase, isn't talking. Nip is a guy with a long rap sheet and a bad rep. Family members of the missing couple went to Love County Sheriff Joe Russell for help, but claim he was trying to cover Con Nip's tracks. But why would the sheriff want to protect a criminal? One of the obvious reasons is, is that he's related to James Con Nip. Uh, my understanding is, is that they're cousins. That's right. Sheriff Russell and Con Nip are family. He's just a dirty cop. He's kind of the overseer or the, the big boss. Of between Con Nip and Joe Russell, they have made a name for themselves in a way that makes people afraid of them, afraid of retribution for, you know, if they, if they tell what they know that something bad will happen to them. But Colt and Molly's families refuse to back down. I just said, the heck with this. I said, let's go, let's go up there. Uh, let's get some answers. You know, we didn't care if we got killed. We didn't, we didn't care. Shortly after Molly and Colt went missing, Sheriff Russell did this interview with our affiliate, KXII. It's the only time he's talked on camera about the case. Every time I tried to do something on the investigation, I was accused of trying to cover something up. So I just took myself out of action. If I get a tip of any kind, I call OSBI. Now the Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation has been brought in not only to solve this missing persons mystery. Uh, the ultimate goal is to find Molly and to find Colt and to uh, see to the justice is done. But to clean up any possible corruption. Sheriff Russell was arrested on uh, some criminal charges and uh, he's accused of basically letting his son, who has been convicted of meth dealing, uh, deal meth essentially out of the house. Not only that, use the sheriff's vehicle, which is outfitted with lights and a police scanner to go deal meth out of that. That's what the FBI claims was going on. And according to arrest records, the sheriff's cousin, Con Nip, is part of that. And basically, he had a previous charge for possession of controlled dangerous substance. What was the sheriff doing in his house and what connection does Con have to that? I mean, who are these people? To me, they're thugs. Now the FBI moves in, and their investigation leads to an indictment of Sheriff Joe Russell on several charges, including two counts of corruption in office 
and two counts of habitual or willful neglect of duty. There are even allegations of the sheriff bringing young girls in bikinis back to his house, supplying drugs, and getting them to strip. A multi-county grand jury finds there's enough evidence of wrongdoing to prosecute the case. Great news for Molly's family. I was very elated the day he was arrested because I believe with his arrest, we will eventually get the answers we, we, we've been waiting for. I think it's a matter of time now. And Colt's sister believes this arrest could lead to the break they've been waiting for. With Mr. Russell, I don't think he's a factor in their disappearance, per se. I think he is a factor in the cover-up of their disappearance. While the sheriff's charges aren't directly related to the disappearance of Colt and Molly, his credibility is certainly being called into question. I can tell you what I have heard from people in Love County regarding their sheriff and the investigation of this case. They have a lot of faith in the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. They don't have a lot of faith in a Love County Sheriff's Office. And after the arrest of their sheriff, Joe Russell, I can understand why. Con Nip is also arrested and charged with endangering others while eluding police. And what does the sheriff have to say about his arrest, his cousin's arrest, and the allegations from Molly and Colt's family members? Apparently, not much. He literally has run not only from me, but from other reporters in this newsroom that have tried to talk to him. Uh, very unusual behavior for that sheriff. But Crime Watch Daily receives information that the sheriff is out of jail while awaiting trial. So we, of course, are looking for Joe Russell, the former sheriff of Love County, and this is what we believe to be his home. So we're gonna knock and see what the sheriff has to say for us. Joe? Joe Russell? Hello? Hey, Joe Russell, come in. Our private security with our camera crew lives in the area, and he knows Joe Russell and his reputation. He suspects danger on the other side of the door and warns us to back off. Sir, I feel more comfortable if you open the door. I'm not opening the door. I ain't got nothing to say. Well, sir, is there anything that you can tell us about the disappearance of Molly and Colt? Well, sir, I can hear you, so you can just talk to me through the door. No, I'm not saying no more. But, sir, there are some serious charges against you. I mean, the charges are serious, accusing your son of running drugs out of here. Oh, I'm gonna get your and get off my plate. All right, sir, nothing you want to say? Recently suspended, Sheriff Joe Russell isn't talking to us, but he will have to explain his actions to a jury of his peers. Do you think we're going to find out a lot more about the alleged corruption? I really think so. I think there's going to be a lot more to it than, than just what we've heard so far. And Molly may be a part of that. Yeah, maybe. I believe, with Joe's arrest especially, that we're going to get the tip we need to bring Molly and Colt home. And there's one tip that may be the tip that breaks this missing person's case wide open. This person's in a position that uh, that she might know a lot of information about what happened to Molly and Colt. So who is this person who could finally solve the mystery? The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation is protecting her identity. Suspended Sheriff Joe Russell remains out of jail awaiting trial on multiple counts, including two counts of corruption in office and two counts of habitual or willful neglect of duty. He's pled not guilty. His cousin, Con Nip, has been convicted of possession of a controlled, dangerous substance and endangering others while eluding police. Still defiant, making an obscene gesture to the camera while leaving court after being sentenced to 10 years in prison.
Khan Nip remains quiet about the night he took Molly Miller and Colt Haynes on a police pursuit down Long Hollow Road, never to be seen again. I'd like to say to anybody that knows what happened to come forward, say something. Just tell us where they are. We just want to bring them home. We don't, we can't live like this anymore. If you have any leads that will bring closure to these families and help solve the missing persons case of Molly Miller and Colt Haynes, contact the Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation. That number is 1-800-522-8017.